It's the Hammond Report for Monday, March 20th of 2022. This is John Hammond, and it's Eddie Money's birthday in absentia today. And we shared almost the same birthday. We used to exchange calls all the time. I miss his calls. So in honor of that, we're going to visit him and some of the things we did. It's Eddie Money with us here on the Hammond Cash Show. How are you doing today, Ed? Yeah, I'm doing great, John. Thanks so much for having me on the show. I would have let a lot of people know that we've been playing together actually since about 1974, 75. John was just a young pup. He was really quite the keyboard player. And uh, we started out, we had the key to the Berkeley High School auditorium. Oh, and we went back there and we used to get into yeah. all the shows from other and slam the door in Bill Graham's God's face. Boy, did they get mad at us. But yeah. we we go back boy, John and I, we go back. I remember when he went to like uh, Berkeley School of Music and we've been hanging out and doing shows with each other occasionally every once and I want to I want to. I'm very grateful to be on the show. And uh, John, you've come a little, really a long way in uh, in your career. Your your TV show's still doing great after 25 years, and now you got this great job with KYOU. Thanks a lot, Eddie. You know, it, it brings back a lot of warm memories back in those days. Of course, that was how we first came to the attention of Bill Graham Presents. Oh, yes. uh, not exactly through the front door, literally through the back door. You know? <laughs> and Scotty the Guard, you know. Sure. We were legendary cats, you know, at those shows. But we got to see some fantastic shows. They brought the Who in, Jimi Hendrix and everybody to the Berkeley Community Theater. And the Barsotti brothers, you know, have done a wonderful job. Uh, the whole Bill Graham organization. And you uh, eventually became to be managed personally by Bill Graham, which was really like a, a beautiful uh, lucky star to be shining over you and I always knew that you were going to make it Eddie. Well thank we you. Met, you know as, it was actually before 1974 as I recall I couldn't even drive a car then I was on a bicycle you know, <laughs> yeah, I had you hair down to my ass. You were, <laughs> you were on the edge yes <laughs> yeah, that's very man. true. Well look yeah. Bill Graham was a great guy and we actually got signed on Amateur Night, they had a show called Sounds of the Cities. The Wednesday nights. Right? It was a Wednesday nights. It was Sounds of the Cities, and I think we were actually one of the first job, first bands to actually get a record deal of a video cassette tape. If you can believe that, we wow. we, we got a deal by making a show on video cassette. And uh, next thing you know, I was uh, opening up uh, Marshall Tucker, and then doing shows, and eventually I I was opening up for the Who and for the Rolling Stone and playing Madison Square Garden, and having so many hits on the belt. I mean, we played the US. 650,000 people. To, it was the largest rock show to date, to this date. With yeah, the, I remember. With the police back in 1980, 81, I think. It all started happening really quick, uh, and uh, I'll never forget when you rolled up in the limousine and you had the first pressings of uh, the Eddie Money album with, with Baby Hold On To Me on yeah, it, and you said, hey guys, here's... <laughs> the, the, and, you know, we went to the uh, photo session with Lynn Goldsmith and right, everything. Sure, great lady. You know, and, and, you know, we want to get to the things that you're doing now, but, you know, we have a, a long history. You came out to the Bay Area. The Bay Area was good to you. Oh, yes. And, uh, I, love, I love living in the Bay Area. Yeah, we had uh, some some notable gigs, uh, uh, most notably the... Uh, the uh, Corral Club in San Jose that we <laughs> that we still never got paid for. The guy was Carl well, was Kennedy. The, the we were on the <laughs> same bill with Sammy Smith. Uh, um, helped me make it through the night. I remember that? that? But they didn't. The, the trouble was, is John, we didn't have a pedal steel guitar player, and we were not. We knew nothing about country western music at all. We were like a heavy metal rock band, not you know more like the Doobie Brothers or the Steve Miller Band. And we came in there, and uh, uh, those people didn't know what hit, what hit them. It was kind of like. Uh, they should have had the fence up around us, like in that movie uh, with the uh, with the, the Blues the, the Brothers, Blues Brothers yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, the beer bottles were flying. I went into the bathroom, <laughs> and before I could get in there, some guy came flying out of there, all bloodied up. Oh, you know, it was a very. But we had pictures. The cowboy bar. Yeah, was we just. we had pictures with Sammy Smith. Whatever happened to those pictures? I don't know, John. I had so many <laughs> great. I used to have pictures of me, and I got a picture of me and Count Basie, which was really amazing. Some oh, picture of me and Mick Jagger. You know, I got a lot of great pictures, but. You know, and when then you, you studied with Ed Kelly at, at, at the Oakland... Uh, Ed Kelly was a, an amazing... Uh, yeah, and Mr. Diamanto, I don't know if he's still around, but I don't know, but he was a great saxophone teacher. That way I was... And Mr. Hebner was a great uh, music teacher also. He you know, taught you a lot about the blues. I Actually, Laney College had a very good music department back, mm -hmm. in, the, back in the early 70s. I learned how to play saxophone in junior college. How about that? Right, yeah, Laney Thank college. you, Mr. D. I appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, Eddie. Well, you know, you came out to the Bay Area from Levittown. Right. And that was sort of my introduction by fire to New York, you right, know. Right, sure. And I met all these 
heavy New York characters that came following you out there. Sure. And I was so intrigued by New York that look what happened. I moved to New York. I live in Times Square now. That's amazing, too. I mean, you know what? You always had that big apple in your blood. I don't know what it is, but, uh, you know, you you know, you know, really get around really well in the sound here. And uh, and New York's a great, it's really a great metro metropolis. It's a great place to be. And, and to be as successful as I am in New York and still selling out BB Kings and still to hear myself on the radio, it's, uh, you know, one thing about New York is they always take care of their own. You got to say yeah. that about it. Eddie's back here for a show at BB Kings, ladies and gentlemen. And the last time uh, he was here, it was packed to the rafters, wall to wall. This is a hometown crowd for Eddie Money here. And now nowadays, you got bringing some of your your... Musicians from the past are on the band, and your daughter's on the band. Yeah, my daughter is actually, she's doing all the work with MTV right now, and she was fortunate enough to get a phone call from Beyonce's dad. Apparently, wow. they're interested in, in taking a good look at Jesse, and she's a real talent. She goes out there. She loves old singers like Etta James and Martha and Vandellas and Ruby Johnson, mm -hmm. and she loves uh, Janis Joplin. She goes out there, and she has a great version of Turtle Blues, and my lead guitar player, Tommy Gervin, has been writing some songs for her, has been Matter of fact, we're probably going to take a minute and feature one of the songs by Jessica, by John. This is a song called "Right Now," written by Tommy Gervin. This is my little girl, Jesse Money. We're gonna we're gonna give it a spin right now on the Ham and Cash Show, ladies and gentlemen. It's been great having Eddie on the show. I want to uh, encourage you to check out his website, which is eddiemoney.com. eddiemoney.com. We do shows all over the country, and uh, I'll see everybody in the lobby. And, and stay close to KYOU, baby, because you know what we're talking about. It's a great radio station, and it's also the home of the Oakland A's. Go A's. Thanks a lot, Eddie. You're welcome, John. I want to see if I get John a job to shoot video for me on the road. Who's, hey, Harold, who's paying for this car? Who hired you to take me to this? CBS. The Invisible Record Company? Huh. It's starting to push me too much, man, again, you know? I've been loving you too long. Hammond Report. I can't stop this is John Hammond. The organ player and accordionist, and I'm back with my daily Hammond report for Saturday, the 14th of November, 2020. Thank you very much, folks, for joining me once again for some more of my music and stories. How's everybody out there? This is a track that I cut with my old friend Eddie Money. And sadly, he passed last year. This is a tune that he always wanted to do. And when he was in New York, I brought him in our Backbeat Production Studio. And we cut this track and it never got released. So I'm going to release it to you today, folks, anybody who's tuned in. And I think it's a really great track, really. It's a different than the kind of things that it usually does. I'm playing the organ on it. And Joe Berger mixed it, Barry Finnerty on guitar. And Apollo Winsky stepped in on the bass. And Todd Anderson did the horns. And here it is, you know. There's a lot of things going on right now. A lot of things not going on right now. And I want to tell everybody to be super careful out there because the virus is raging. Come back tomorrow. I have another Hammond report for ya. And a lot more coming your way. This is John Hammond, wishing you a beautiful weekend. Bring you home on the organ.